three, two, one, go. So, first thing I need to do in the game is mash start to skip the tutorial. I did that. Good. First skip done. Kind of. And if you've not seen this game before, this is fundamentally a um, 2D side-scrolling beat-em-up game with a lot of um, stat upgrading elements. It's for the GBA. Um, I saw, I've been watching the chat, a lot of people seem to be familiar with this game, so hopefully there are already a lot of people who are going to know what this is mainly about. Progression through this game is mostly a matter of clearing enemy waves as they come quickly. We use um, different strats for different parts of the game, as you might expect to get through enemy waves quickly. Astro has a number of different abilities that you can use. Um, you've got your fundamental punching and kicking. You've also got this uh, finger laser, which I'm trying to use here, which goes across the entire screen. And you've got the jet boots, which um, effectively act as double jumps. And when you further upgrade it, a triple, quadruple, quintuple jump, etc. They also give you iframes as long as the um, rocket boost animation is in effect, which is really handy. And this is the first super attack that you're seeing me use here, the arm cannon. Astro has three super attacks, the arm cannon, the machine gun, and the EX attack. You won't really be seeing me use the EX attack unless I need an emergency jump. So this is the machine gun. It's a screen-wide attack, which is very weak, but as I mentioned, it does affect the whole screen, so it's useful for clearing entire enemy waves out. The arm cannon, however, is going to be the main bread-and-butter damage-dealing attack. So what you've seen me do at this point already is pick up my first upgrade point. One of the main elements of this game is boosting Astro's stats as the game progresses, which is done by meeting characters and learning about their emotions and personalities. And you have a bunch of stats that you can upgrade, such as life, your punching power, laser power, etc. For the most part, we're going to be upgrading the laser power, as it is the highest DPS you can manage in the game. We previously, on the previous route, upgraded jets first for mobility, because we just thought, you know, if you can go faster, as you can with the jets here, then that's going to end up being faster. But after some testing and rerouting, I've found out that pure firepower really seems to be the way to go with this game. And once we've fully maxed out the laser stat, we're going to put points into the shot stat. Which sounds a little counterintuitive when I mentioned that it's a very low damage attack that just hits the full screen. But it has a bit of a hidden utility which we will see more of later in the game. Like, it's only really relevant at the end of the game. So I've got this section where I'm just trying to take care of these spiders as they come on screen. These guys come on at fixed points of the screen, like the left, right, and top of the screen, and they're fairly predictable, so I'm just trying to take care of them as they come on. That seemed like a pretty clean section. And so I've got a damage route for this spider boss here, just three punches and an arm cannon will kill it. Oh well, two arm cannons, I should say. And I need to do it quickly and hope he doesn't go up too high. A lot of the enemies in this game do have quite a bit of RNG in both how they move and behave, but Generally, Astro is going to get so powerful throughout the game that a lot of stuff is really trivialized. Especially because we are playing on the easy difficulty, as it is significantly faster. It's faster not only because enemies are weaker, but because you have access to a lot more super attacks. You can see in the center top of the screen it says Super 33. That's how many super attacks I have stored, which is fueling my arm cannons and machine guns and stuff. If you play on normal mode, you are limited to having 5 in reserve, and if you play on hard mode, you're limited to having 3 in reserve. Hard mode in this game is also one of the most appropriately titled categories I've um, like played in a game ever. Like um, to do the full game category, which we call or get the true ending. My PB for that's around the um, one hour twenty region. On hard difficulty, it takes me around. I've tried it a couple of times and I've gotten about as good as four hours on it because you just die that much because it really is that difficult. So it's a bit hellish. Um, stage 2 is the first um, auto scroll we're going to see. If um, Cherokee, if you want to talk a little about how stuff in these sections are going to go at all. Yeah, so I mean, a lot of times you think of auto scrollers as really no time loss or time gain. Um, there actually is a decent amount of potential time loss or time save in these, um, simply because the waves of enemies uh, don't spawn until the previously uh, previous wave is, has been cleared out. Um, exactly. So there's a lot of benefit to, to clearing out these waves as fast as possible to get to the next one yeah um it's one of the big early time losses for folks who pick up this game yeah there's quite a bit of like memorization of remembering exactly how the enemies are going to come on screen what the most effective way to deal with them quickly is and a lot of also seeing how much you can get away with not using any super attacks since you can see that every time i trigger a super attack it causes this like two 
ish second animation where Astro is readying the attack. That is a little bit of time loss every time I need to do it. During boss fights, I am going to spam the arm cannon regardless, such as you're going to see here on the artificial sun. I'm just going to be spamming the arm cannon as it's by far the quickest way to deal with it. But for the auto scroller sections, you'd think the machine gun would be useful as it's screen wide and it can defeat weak enemies quickly. But since it has the activation time, it's just not worth doing if we can still clear stuff out quickly with just the finger laser. Currently, I do need to be mashing the B button to keep the finger laser activated, but as it gets more upgraded, it's going to um, be possible to maintain it just from holding the button. So this guy, as you can see, he just gets larger and larger the more health he loses, but as I mentioned, the arm cannon just tears through him very easily. We're about to come up to what's meant to be like a joke mini boss, and it kind of is, but there's a quick kill strategy which is not entirely trivial to pull off, and if I get hit by the mini boss, there's an unavoidable recoil animation that I get, so I hope I don't mess this up. Yeah, that's fine. Three punches and a laser. The recoil animation that is really silly considering how <laughs> trivial that fight is meant to be, and it loses like a good couple of seconds to get hit by that boss. So that's an example of where he could have used two arm cannons, but because of the charge up time, he's just using three punches exactly, plus one arm yeah. cannon. Oh, whoops. That stuck a little there. Yeah, there's this room in the dark that you have to navigate. Um, this is a nice little example of how the game expects you to spec Astro in different ways with the upgrade points. I can't see in this room because I don't have any points in Astro's hypersensor. If you have one point, then Astro can see in the dark. So I just need to take care of this. There was a statue on the left there guarding this door. So these enemies, these huge robot enemies, are going to be one punch plus an arm cannon, so I'm just going to punch first and then use the arm cannon after the punch lands. Similar with the finger laser, just up ahead there's going to be a series of them flying down, so I'm going to use the iframes from the jet to go straight through them, use an arm cannon to the left, and finish with one finger laser to take them all out in one. So this elevator, um, I think Cherokee, you actually figured out exactly how this elevator section works, right? Yeah, there's some bats and some bees that spawn in this. Uh, once you've killed 12 bees, there's 14 total, no more bats, so um, they're all random, so it's kind of hard sometimes to get a good set, and there's an upgrade here that he has to get as well in the middle of the elevator. Yeah. Um, so now that he has that, he'll be trying to kill the, the bees as fast as possible in order to stop the waves from spawning. This is... Uh, okay, it was looking pretty good. That's the unavoidable recoil animation I was talking about. That guy can cause that as well, but that ended up pretty good, actually. Like, I took one hit, but they ended up in quite convenient spots, so I can't complain too much about that. Alright, so, as well as being able to use the jets for iframes, they more or less make Astro basically intangible, like you can go through enemies, and a benefit of this is that if you want to use the arm cannon as basically a screen-wide attack across just, um, across the screen where Astro is, as you can see, um, one problem with that is making sure that all the enemies are to one side of you, and you can exploit the jets to force that, because if you, like, boost inside an enemy, then once Astro becomes solid, he'll basically force the enemy aside into the screen, so you can end up on one far side of the screen, and then just turn around and use it for a screen-wide attack. So this is Poke, who has a few random forms. He's gonna switch between these four animal forms. Um, the first four are fixed, and now they are random, and I'm just hoping for this last one to not see the... No, yeah, the line again. The line is the worst one you can get, because it always spawns in with this green aura, which gives it iframes, and the duration of it seems to be random, so we just hope to not see it. But I got one, and that's not the worst you can get, so that's fine. So, I'm gonna take a short detour from boosting my laser to upgrade shot once here, because at the start of stage three, there's a couple of sections where, rather than the enemies coming on screen slowly here, they're going to come on screen all at once, and with one point in shot, I can defeat all of them at the same time, which makes these sections a lot quicker. So right here, I just use shot, and these are, guys are all going to die at the same time. Same thing's going to happen here. These guys do come on fairly slowly, but it's still preferable to just get them all in one like this. And while you're using the machine gun, you do have complete invincibility. Nothing can touch you or even interact with you while the machine gun's active. So... Although this game is generally quite easy in terms of nothing's really a high risk on easy difficulty, you're not really going to die much. If you are in an absolute emergency situation, the machine gun is basically a perfect um, emergency button to just get out of any dangerous situation quickly. Yeah, on easy mode, it's less about not dying, more about just not getting hit, so you can't yeah. do damage while you're bouncing around in <sighs> recoil mode. I'm going to need to use the air uh, stash here. The silo in particular is, is really difficult, so you can see that gravity is really low, so... Um, 
mistakes like that can make you go much higher or lower than you want. Yeah, I couldn't really tell where that enemy was and I didn't manage to hit him in time while I was passing him, so I needed to wait to go back down and then use an EX dash to get back up as well because I'd run out of jumps because I don't have any points in jets. And the EX dash is performed by pressing A and B on the same frame, I think. It, it seems to be fairly precise. Like, you can spend quite a lot of attempts just trying to get the EX dash, dash to trigger and unless you do it at exactly the same time, it just doesn't seem to work. Oh, that's weird. Alright, that wasn't what I expected, but that worked as well. So I'm just trying to use some precise positioning here to gain um, huge clusters of enemies all in one arm cannon, as you can see here. I know where these enemies are going to spawn. There's a possible, like, enemy wave skip here that we don't really understand how to trigger. We're just going to see if we get it here. Either a second... Yeah, I got it here. Like, there was meant to be a second enemy that came on there, but it just progressed to the next area of the stage, so I don't really know why I did differently there. <laughs> I'm just trying to do this um, the same way that I normally do, all the time. Weird. The enemy requires another arm cannon as well, so that actually saves a lot of time, because yeah, you don't have to go through the right. animation as well as killing the enemy. So this mech's a little irritating, but... I typically use this method where I try and intersperse punches and arm cannons, and he goes down in three sets. So I'm going to take a little detour here. Um, there's an optional upgrade point earlier that I passed up, which is a bit less out of the way than this one here. But So I'm going to take a detour using a super to uncover this character, gain another upgrade point. This is a dual purpose, so I'm going to get some more power here. And this screen is meant to be one of the laggiest sections of the game, but for some reason, after you get this upgrade point, this section here doesn't lag at all. Or it, it doesn't lag at all during normal gameplay, and during the super attacks, it lags a lot less. I don't know why this happens, but I noticed it during one of my 100% runs, and it saves actually a non-trivial amount of time. So for swapping out one upgrade point, this actually saves probably a good few seconds over the route we, we used to use. Yeah, this is probably the biggest change that's happened somewhat recently. It saves between 7 and 10 seconds, depending on how well you execute the rest of this room. It does yeah. make this room harder because you then have less time to avoid some of the attacks, since it's not lagging as much. Yeah, if um, you can see how hard the game is lagging right now as I'm punching these enemies, this is what that previous section would have been constantly, if I hadn't had the lag reduction. So it's well worth being able to reduce the lag there. Okay, so that was a pretty good section as well, where I got good enemy placements and the piston cycles lined up pretty well. So just one more shot to clear out these enemies as well, and yeah, we've got a few fixed yeah, sections here. You can't here. tell, you know, just watching this game once, but several of these screens are RNG based with the enemy spawns. These are not an example of that. Um, mm -hmm. but those, those bats were all random, so there's lots of times where you have to kind of think on your feet. It's one of the more exciting parts about playing this game through over yeah, and definitely. over again. So we're about to come up on this stage 3 boss, Atlas. Um, the only stat that you, is really worth having here is laser, and that's going to be the same for a lot of the game, because there are two modes when you're playing this game. You're either on the ground, as you've seen me just at Astro doing the side-scrolling beat-em-ups, but there are also these sections where you're flying in the air, and when you're in the air, all you can use is the laser or the um, machine gun. So your hand-to-hand -hand stats basically don't do anything during these sections, and this makes up a big bulk of the game, which is a part of why it's just preferable to boost the um, attacking stats. But you can see there with like maxed-out laser just how quickly Atlas goes down to repeated arm cannons there. And it really shows how much quicker it is to play this game on the easier difficulties as well, that if you compare that to how that would be on even just normal mode, um, Atlas would be a lot bulkier you would have um, less arm cannons that you can use, and he would also do a lot more damage. So you actually need to play conservatively and make sure you don't get hit very much. Either way. I'm not sure if you mentioned this either, but um, one other change between the game modes is that um, you I don't gain super while using supers. All right, so you can see his green meter went up there while he was using his arm cannon. Yeah. Uh, in other game modes, that does not happen, so you get more of an infinite super usage in easy mode. Exactly. And um, on the green wave of enemies there, that's the first actual mistake that I made in the run. I got my positioning wrong. That's what I mean about I was trying to boost to the far left of the screen and force that guy towards the right of me. But I ended up on the right hand side of him because I didn't wait long enough, I think. And then he just punched me and sent me across the screen. It's like, yeah, these things happen. So these um, platform locations as they come on screen are random as well. I'm getting quite a lot of good spawns here, actually. Like these guys are lining up really conveniently. Yeah, I don't know, that seemed pretty good to me. Yeah, that seemed really, uh, really solid. A lot of times you have to hit those, the green bullets, it's faster than just going around and avoiding them, even though you do have a, a brief break in your damage output. Yeah. So, 
the plot of exactly what's going on here is that like um, Antarctica has its first president, and it's a robot president because it, that's a lot easier than sending an actual human president to reside over the Antarctic. And a human terrorist cell really don't like that, so they have destroyed the robot president, and now they're just doing terrorist things. There are a bunch of black-clad domestic terrorists who don't like people disagreeing with their opinions, and they use violence to get what they want. Just as well that we don't have that sort of thing in the real world. Absolutely not. <laughs> so you see here, he's, he's using the laser again, right? Just the finger laser, not the arm cannon, because it kills these guys so quickly now that he's got it upgraded. Also, at this point, you can hold down the B button, and you don't have to continually spam it. So. Oh yeah, I can do that, can't I? <laughs> <laughs> we got... Alright, so I'm just trying to remember um, the order that the enemies come on here. Because there are certain waves, uh, such as that previous one, where they start off slower and then come on thicker and faster. But if I can minimize the amount of times that I'm moving up and down to get them, then it just does it a little bit faster. Okay, so same here. I'm going to take a damage boost here to just take care of those super quickly. Ah, I just missed the enemy. It's fine. That's one of those, you know, few tenths of a second that... Not a big deal in individual scenarios, but they certainly add up over the course of the game. Yeah. And this is another situation where that platform has little enough health left there that it's faster for me to just use the finger laser rather than another arm cannon. So this is a huge, like, um, nuclear bomb tank, Carabs, which is going to go down in four arm cannons and a little bit of um, three arm cannons. And then just a little bit of finger laser. Alternatively, yeah, I'm going to use a fourth arm cannon. You get the start up animation here, but if you use the finger laser, you take a hit against the boss, so it interrupts your damage output anyway. I'm not entirely sure which is faster. They're both about equal, as far as I can tell. So now that we've uh, followed this group's plot somewhat, we're just going to progress on and beat the crap out of them. And get the crap beaten out of, apparently. This is one of it's, the hardest it, um, screens in the game, along with the, the spiders that were in uh, yeah, stage this, one. This screen's kind of unfriendly. That this is good though, because I'm ending up I'm using damage boost to get forced to the left and end up on again the far side, and then I can use Astro's kick to send the enemies across the screen and make sure they're all clustered in the same place. One of the things about this game is that if an enemy isn't on screen, it won't take damage from what you're doing. So I do need to make sure that the enemies are on screen as I'm hitting them. Yeah, the kick that he's doing, you can uh, basically do a punch with a down at the same time, it'll kick. Also, I've... at the end of your four-punch combo, if you do get one off, it will do a kick as well. I've uh, never seen a red guy behave like kick that. Damage. Yeah, that's uh, very strange that he's, I... he's turned around on. I think I was just too fast there, honestly, because normally you um you boost through him and wait for him to just punch to the left, and then just you know go to the right, but he turned around, so I think I was just a bit too fast there. That feel when you're just too good at the game. Yeah, most of us don't have that problem, but... <laughs> is it really still being good at the game though if it's making you lose time though that's fair the point philosophical question of the day is it good speedrunning if you're losing time from being too optimal another auto scroll another yeah auto there's a few of these sorry <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you've got any uh, observations to make about the run at this point. Yeah, I mean, they just they uh, they look very similar to the other stages, right? So, like, actually learning where the exact enemies come in, if they are in set place, first portion of this stage, um, they are all set. You know, it takes yeah. a little bit of time because it looks similar to stage two and stage four and places. Um, you know, at the same time, though, the ease of entry to this game is, is pretty low. Um, you can play through it without really knowing how to do it. You can play through on easy mode in, you know, an hour or two the first time, especially if you're reading all the text, which I would highly recommend. Yeah. Um, and then learning to run it doesn't take a ton of time either, obviously, getting to the, the level of play you're seeing right now. This a little is, more time invested. This is definitely just as much of a good casual experience as it is a speed experience, so yeah, well worth checking out this game just to play casually, but then if you want to pick up this game, or if you're even someone who has been enthusiastic about speedrunning and is looking for a place to begin. I am fairly comfortable in saying this is probably the easiest game that I've attempted to run. In terms of just learning how to do the run, it does, as Cherokee says, have a fairly low point of entry. And there's nothing particularly technical about this run. Like, this isn't like running Celeste or anything of the sort. You can learn this game and just have a good time with it without being a super technical wizard. You don't have to constantly be doing frame-perfect inputs and stuff like that. It helps if you can do them, but they're not necessary. The other thing that um, 
we kind of just barely have touched on is that several of the upgrades uh, Draco is getting are actually optional. Uh, you don't, you're not forced to get them throughout the progression of the story. Um, yeah. We choose to get them just because they they boost your damage output and they don't take that much time. There's a lot that are out of the way that we are intentionally ignoring, um, simply because yeah. they take too long to acquire that point. Yeah. And by the end of the run, um, as I mentioned, the only stats that are really worth boosting for going quickly are laser and shot. And those stats with the route that we use are going to be maxed out by the end of the run anyway. So any extra points that we get, it's taking time to collect the points and they're not really contributing to useful stats anyway. Alright, so during setup, I uh, stumbled upon a strat which I just screwed up there, which I guess is why I shouldn't use strats, I haven't practiced, but I tried. <laughs> okay, so this section can be a little irritating. You have these guys who come on in separate waves. They come on from the sides of the screen, and very helpfully, you can't see where they are at the sides. And they have that punch attack, which will send you across the stream, the screen and force you to lose control of Astro. So, please die. Dude. That guy's bulky. Alright, so for these this green is one of the guys... where we're trying to optimize it still. Sorry. Um, yeah. Like, between <laughs> punching and, and arm cannoning, it's really difficult, and it's based on the enemy placement, so there's a lot of room for optimization on a couple of these screens. Meanwhile, he's using a new strat that he discovered about a month ago, I think. Something like that, yeah. I, I just figured out here that on the green guys, since they like to use the gun as well, you can use some intentional damage boosts to just gain iframes, and again, just go to the side and get them all in one. And we get a nice little health pick up here for this boss, which I will not need it on. This huge mech looks really threatening, and it's going to be launching this huge attack towards me, but it's not going to reach me before it dies. <laughs> so, yeah. Just another boss just completely destroyed by arm cannon. It's really useful to have the laser stat maxed. It just pays dividends, and the shot stat that I'm now in the process of upgrading, it's going to pay dividends as well. I'm not like using the shot yet, so you can't really see the effect that it has, but in the last stage of the game, which is basically a boss rush, it saves so much time to have the shot stat at a high level. It's basically mandatory. I mean, you can try some strats that involve not having it maxed or not utilizing it as much, um, but there's one boss in particular that uh, would be incredibly difficult to do without. Yeah. But it, in most cases, you can potentially go about as fast. Like, a task could probably get away with not using the shot, but it just massively increases the amount of RNG that you need to deal with. Okay, good. I managed to manipulate the enemy actions there, and all done in one. Nice. So I just kick these guys across the screen so I can cluster them all in one and hit with a laser, as I did before. This entire stage is going to look trivial. Um, it's actually really difficult. This is uh, a these things do a lot of stage, damage, yeah. um, and and you don't really know what they're going to do. Sometimes uh, there's a really nice boss manipulation coming up uh, that is going to help us save a lot of time as well. But the stage is, is definitely <laughs> difficult to learn. Okay, that took a couple of attempts, because these guys can guard, but that's fine. This guy's, yeah, gonna hit me once, but that's fine as well. So we'll just boost through. So an arm cannon and one finger laser to finish these things off, actually. And then this pyramid is meant to be pretty difficult to ascend, but if you just have well-placed movement from when you enter the screen, you can actually get through here very smoothly and very quickly, without actually getting hit at all. Thankfully, these spawns are not random, so once yeah. you get the pattern correct, you can... So this is the manipulation I was talking about. This is Sharaku, and if you are at, if you're underneath him when he decides his first action, he will always use this specific attack. It's one of the three special attacks he can use, and this is good because whilst this attack is active, he cannot use his worst attack that causes a lot of forced time loss. Like it's a green attack where there's just a very long animation where he's dropping rocks on you and he's completely invulnerable in that time. But if you force that attack to happen by being underneath him at the start, he pretty much won't be able to get off the green attack. I'm very glad to have discovered that as it makes that fight a lot more consistent and hence a lot faster as well. It used to be a huge run killer getting to that and then having green be the first attack. So yeah, yeah. big props on that one. So this is the boss rush that I mentioned. So world's strongest robots. First up is North, the um, utility robot. He's really called multi-purpose robot. Okay, this can be good if he gets stuck. Yeah, nice. So, North has a lot of different actions you can use. That drill is good if you manage to trap him in the right spot and then get lots of extra time to attack him. That wasn't an ideal fight, but it was still definitely an above average fight. Um, the second fight coming up is Denko. This is going to be the first fight that really shows what the shot actually does. This is meant to be a long drawn out fight where he turns invisible and you need to track him down, but... 
So I'm going to start off with an arm cannon, and now I'm going to use a shot. And the secret of the shot is the more you upgrade it, the longer the stun time it has. Like, Denko would at this point normally just run away, but this keeps him stunned long enough that I can just hit him with another couple of arm cannons and he goes down instantly. There's no need to do any tracking in that fight. And that's going to be the theme for the last three remaining bosses. Next one up is Brontus, who is meant to just do a lot of moving around and only leave you with a few seconds at a time to hit him while his weak spot is out. So I'm going to wait for this rebound. So I'm going to start with the shot here. And now I'm pretty much going to be able to maintain a pace of using two lasers for every shot, and it's going to keep him infinitely stunlocked. So I'm going to be able to finish him off in this single phase. We're still missing one point to max shot, um, but there's yeah. just there's a small enough gap between the stun time and your next laser being up that you don't actually need it at this point. Um, exactly. If that were the case, we would have picked up a different optional upgrade before getting here, because he can be a real bear if he goes back into his invulnerable modes and starts bouncing around on you. Yeah. So this gives us a max shot in time for the second last boss, Epsilon, who thankfully is a lot more fragile than Brontus, but I do need to pay attention to what Epsilon's first action is. Uh, he's going to raise one of his arms. Depending which arm he's raising, it is going to show which attack he's using. Okay, so he's going for his laser attack, so I'm going to need to use a slower method here, where after my second laser, I'm going to need, need to use another shot, because otherwise this attack will make him invulnerable. So if he'd raised his other arm, I would just keep arm cannoning here, so it would basically save one super attack cycle, but it's not a lot, it's just a couple of seconds. So the final boss here, Pluto, like I said, I've got all my useful stats, so now I'm just going to put it into life, because it's the quickest stat to upgrade. And full shot is very useful for this fight. Pluto is super bulky, does a lot of damage with some of his attacks, and he has a lot of attacks to choose from. So I'm just going to try and keep him in place as much as I can. I'm also going to try to not use the shot so much, if I can help it though, because obviously the more arm cannons I can use, the faster he'll go down. And this is the final fight, and time is going to be when he runs out of health. Okay, I need to use shot again, because he's readying his uh, laser attack. Hopefully he doesn't trigger it already. Okay, I'm at least getting a couple more lasers in before it starts. This is a really laggy attack. So basically, in the next 10 seconds, I'm going to be calling time anyway, when this guy goes down. If I'm super close here, he could use this cyclone attack. Okay, he's just using another laser, that's fine. And... Time. Looking on stream, it looks like it's going to be a low 27, which is pretty good. 27, 15, maybe? I don't know. We'll see. Beans catch up. Come on! 27, 21, it looks like. 27, 21, I think, yeah. That's, Congrats, great run. I think that's a pretty decent run, yeah. Uh, for reference, my PB is a 26.48. So, considering I played some parts questionably, <laughs> and was uh, trying to commentate as much as possible, then I think that was a pretty good run. Yeah, no rebirth this time, but you never know, the next time if I submit uh, Beat Stage 8, you could indeed see that uh, part of the game as well. Or, you, you know, run this game yourself and see what it's like to run. Rebirth is quite a bit different to Birth, more, more so than you'd think, because as a fun bit of trivia, this is one of the only speed games that I know of where Different regions of the game are optimal for different categories. Um, I'm playing the US version here for Birth because it's faster. For Rebirth, it's actually faster to run the Japanese version. So again, if you want to like know more details about that, like look into it yourself, and it's interesting how it ends up being faster. Spoilers, the game is actually different. <laughs> but yeah, that is Astro Boy, Omega Factor, Birth category. And I'd like to thank Cherokee for being here with me, and of course to the ESA staff for putting on this event. And... Not sure who we're going to be handing it off over to. And you get the schedule. Oh yeah, Toko's next. Toko Tomcat with Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie. So make sure you guys don't go anywhere. And thanks again for having us on. And I'm sure I will see you guys again sometime soon.
Welcome back to Issei Movember. The run you just watched was Astro Boy Omega Factor by Draco Dan. Good run by Draco Dan. I hope you guys enjoyed his run. It was a really cool game. I've never seen the game before myself personally, but I do know of Astro Boy being one of the, if I don't recall wrong, one of the revolutionary like manga series that came out uh, for its time. Pretty pretty rad, rad uh, series. Uh, by, if I don't recall wrong, Osamu Tezuka is the creator behind Astro Boy. In any event, hope you guys have a good night. This will be my last hosting shift for ESA Movember, but you'll... Yeah. <laughs> Yo, so if you do miss me after this, make sure you check out ESA Winter coming up soon. Uh, make sure you come, come attend the event. The event is really sick. Definitely brings back the old cozy feeling of the earlier events and um, it's just great and it's here in Vekwe so it brings back even more old memories of ESA and the hotel has a jacuzzi it's pretty good it's pretty good um, so yeah coming up is is this our last Game Boy game for the event Nara doesn't know I have no idea either I should know but I forgot in it <laughs> uh, hope you guys are having a great night. Um, I can't grow a mustache. You, you look at me, and you would probably recognize me more. With, since my, my growth is so unique, it's probably more comparable to... If you watch Detective Conan, you'll notice a character that has the same mustache growth as me. So I can't grow a proper uh, Movember mustache, for that matter. Um, but I won't keep you long. Next game is already set up. It's going to be Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie, on the Game Boy by Toko Tomcat. I'll be shifting it over to the runner. Good luck, and I'll see you guys in the next intermission. I can tell I'm I'm on I'm live when someone calls me out for being a cat, but thank you so much. <laughs> All right, I am Toko Tomcat. We're gonna be playing some Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the movie. Hope everyone's doing well tonight. Well, it's late night for everyone over in Sweden, but for us it's prime time, Morphin time. But I want to know from chat: Is the power on tonight? And I'm, I have my chat over here. On the right hand side. It's the power on chat. Oh, don't worry. I'll talk about that in just a second. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll go ahead and get going here. All right. It's morphin time in five.